Francisco de Goya, regarded as one of the most important and influential Spanish artists from the 18th to 19th century, and is most famous for going mad. If you don't believe me, he made his entire house an exhibit on how he really wasn't okay. Goya was born in 1746. From a young age, he was an artist. He painted and worked his way up all the way to what eventually was the Spanish royal court, which is the highest level you can get to at that point. Although I did hear he had zero Twitter followers, so how famous could he have really been? Anyway, at this point in time, his paintings were fairly normal, or at least his royal ones were. They used bright color palettes, they were very pretty, and he was extremely skilled. He was regarded as one of the best portrait painters for the royal family, and it was passed down through family to royal family to royal family to royal family. But of course, an artist always has their personal works, and he very much critiqued society a lot. Some would say he was fairly, fairly liberal. He critiqued society, and that was another thing that he was famous for at that time, especially among the citizens of Spain. He wasn't always a fan of the royal family. There was a couple that he was a fan of, there was a couple that he wasn't a fan of. Obviously, the story of a skilled critic uh, doesn't have much of a happy ending. In the 1790s, he was plagued with an unknown illness, that's still unknown to this day, which apparently made him start to go deaf, which slowly started his decline and isolation from society. Although he still was a royal painter and he still painted for many, many royals. It didn't help that the French army invaded Spain in 1808 and took down the weak, crippling Spanish government that Goya was painting. Under. Goya found a way to live though. He painted under the French regime and painted for that royal family, you know, to make a living because we live in a society and even though we don't agree with it, we kind of gotta live with it. What is regarded as one of his most famous masterpieces is the 3rd of May, which is the response that the French had to the Spanish citizens having an uprising against the French army. It was a very big moment of history. I don't know if Goya experienced it, but it obviously it was extremely important to him. Personally, my favorite works come from this era of him. Even though he was driven by, by illness, by sadness, by madness, by whatever the French were doing. Which who knows what the French are doing. His most famous paintings are obviously the black paintings, the ones where he like etched into his house or painted with oil on his house, which then later had to be removed with a little seesaw seesaw and placed into a museum because obviously they were very, very good, but very, very mad driven. A lot of people find these paintings absolutely disturbing, which I don't disagree with you. <laughs> There's uh, literal cannibalism, dead people, dogs sinking in quicksand. It's very, very strange. However, I cannot replicate those paintings because <laughs> not my cup of tea to show to a school audience. As much as I said I love the black paintings and the era where he went mad, I think some of my favorite paintings from him come from the 1790s, which is exactly where he starts to go deaf. Since he got mysteriously ill during that time, it's obvious that his mental state and his mental thinking obviously declined with it, and that was kind of shown through his paintings and through his criticisms of society, which he continued to do, regardless of what his own situation was. In the 1790s, he created this thing, he created these sets of prints called Los Caprichos, and I feel like they aren't talked about enough, because they're super, super cool, and I really like them. It's a series of 80 prints, and it was basically all just a critique, 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 critique of the Spanish society, which was, it's, I mean, it's like an absolute banger move. <laughs> the fact that he went out and openly sold them is so, so very funny to me. However, I also did not repaint one of the Los Caprichos as much as I loved all of them. What I did paint was the Witch's Sabbath, painted in 1798. I'm gonna check that. Instead, I repainted the Witch's Sabbath, painted in 1798. You might be wondering, what the frick is the Witch's Sabbath? Which, I mean, Fair question. The Witch's Sabbath is the predecessor of another painting by the same name that he made later etched into his wall. It was like his first thoughts before he lost the brain cells to comprehend what the heck he was doing. The Witch's Sabbath was a painting that he created to 
either criticize witches or criticize Catholicism. No one really knows either because his thoughts were kind of lost to space. He basically compared what the witches do to what priests do with Catholics. And that's a hot take from somebody during that time period. And I feel would have gotten him killed if people didn't take his painting so seriously never really talked about what, what, what he painted with. He is an oil painter as much as the painters were back in that day. Oil was pretty fairly common back then, especially because royals really liked their oil. Kind of like our royal government likes oil now. Wow, what did you know? History just repeats itself. The Witch's Sabbath is a painting that is portrait size and has a demon goat in the center, surrounded by these witches, we could presume are witches, and all their faces are distorted in some way. We can't really tell who, who they are or if they were based on anybody. And they are sacrificing baby children. Apparently a common trope for witches. This demon goat in the center has a nice little, little crown of leaves and is standing pointing out with their left hoof towards a baby child, which is the direct opposite of what God or the priests would do in Catholicism with their right hand. There's also a lot of dead baby children, which I did not draw a lot of. I'll be honest, I was really not feeling the whole dead baby vibe. Like there was an entire dead baby on the ground in that painting. And I said, you know what? Maybe, maybe today's not the day I draw a dead baby. Um, it's also set under the clear night sky with a beautiful quarter moon painted that way because a lot of people believe that witches only perform stuff under a full moon and it was like, no, you, you guys are idiots, so I painted a quarter moon. Goya painted this with oil on a canvas. I painted my rendition on a computer. I try to repaint it what I like how I would paint it if I were a painter in any sense of the sort I don't paint I color I do cartoons so a main difference between ours is I did line art for a lot of it well he is a painter so he doesn't need to do line art and all of it would technically be called line less another main difference is how instead of me drawing hanging babies in the background I drew little hanging uh, voodoo dolls. The fact that he drew hanging babies is kind of weird. Huh. Maybe, maybe this is why people don't like it. Most of the composition is the same. I used similar color palettes, although I changed some of the colors on mine and made them flow more together. For at least my eye, I wouldn't know I'm not a trained artist and he sure is. I also followed his lead and used these little like painting brushes and made sure all the colors were very blended together but also had a stark contrast between this, this base color and the shadow color which is not something I usually do. Francisco de Goya has really found a place in my heart and that sounds really stupidly dark and makes me kind of sound like a crazy person which I mean at this point Fair enough! Um, there's something about his paintings and his dark works that extremely intrigue me. I look at it and I am like, I am disturbed! But also I can't look away and I'm not gonna forget that. But I really do like Francisco de Goya's work and his history makes it so much more interesting. The way that he went out in the end is kind of funny because he kind of got exiled. Uh, he kind of got booted by the Spanish or we're like, yo, dude, we don't, we don't really like you here, so you go, you go back to France, you old France pansy, and it's like, okay. So we got exiled for being liberal and living in a society. Francisco de Goya, an important Spanish artist who went out being known as the lunatic of the 18th to 19th century, but also recognized deeply for the work that he has done and the criticisms that he put out there. And that's pretty freaking cool. 